Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so excited because of the joy of the communion in the God kind and the privilege to receive of the Father that which to dish out to you so that together we can come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of Son of God and be the perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Welcome to today's special episode. As part of that which we are receiving daily to make us enjoy our lives on this earth according to our Father's plan. To bring us into a state of rapid maturity towards becoming the full measure of the stature of Christ and to make us effective in the work of the ministry so that as a force on the earth we can rapidly usher mankind into God's blissful life for them in Christ Jesus. So get set as we go for today. Father, we thank you for the breeze of life, the breeze of glory, the breeze of beauty, the breeze of health washing bodies of sicknesses. Receive refreshment even as the word enters your life today. Now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. We started with the subject of the Holy Ghost advantage. And we looked at part one. And in that part one, we focused on the truth that, that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Is the proof that you can grow spiritually. The import of that message was to awaken in you the desire to allow yourself to grow. Do not leave spiritual maturity to a few people that you consider spiritual. Everyone born again through the Spirit can grow spiritually. It says, till we all come. It is it till pastors come, till apostles come, till we all come. Who are the we? All of us in the body of Christ, the saints of God. Don't leave yourself out of spiritual growth. It is for you. The Holy Ghost in you is your advantage. He came to assist you. He came to counsel, to strengthen, to stand by. So he can minister the substance of the word to bring growth to you. Today we are moving forward and we're going to look at the Holy Ghost Advantage Part 2. I told you that I'm retitling the whole series a little differently from what we have in the mass paid at, so that the thoughts can flow for us and it will be easier to follow. And in this 
second part of the Holy Ghost advantage, we are going to deal with the truth that with the Holy Ghost in you, you can discern things in the spirit. You can function in spiritual discernment. I really want you to take your time and understand these teachings. I have dealt with a lot of people over the past 30 years of sharing this truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. And I have come to notice that a lot of God's sons and daughters have this feeling that they cannot know spiritual things. They often see themselves as the unspiritual people and only the gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors are the spiritual ones. And so they have left the exploration of the spirit realm which is their natural realm, only to the people that have been sent to them as shepherds. There is a place for the work of shepherds, for the work of the fivefold ministry in your life. But there are things that are common to all of us as citizens of the heavenly kingdom. One of them is the ability to discern spiritually. Because a good number of God's sons and daughters have not known that the Holy Ghost in them is their advantage to be able to discern spiritual things. They find it even difficult to discern and make proper spiritual decisions in the daily activities of life. And so a good number of them make a lot of painful and sometimes irreversible mistakes in life. And yet the realm of the spirit is not a mysterious realm to the born again. To be born again is an initiation into divinity. And you must be made aware. Now, when we say that every Christian can grow to design spiritual, we are not saying that every Christian is a prophet. We are not saying that every Christian stands in the office of a prophet or every Christian functions by the gift of discernment as listed in the book of Corinthians. But there's the natural living of a son, a daughter of God, where because of your being one with the Holy Ghost, you're being filled with the Holy Ghost, you are able to make accurate spiritual discernments in your daily dealings in life. The Holy Ghost is your advantage. Let's take a read at our main scripture for today. Again, we are in the New King James Version. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the 14th verse. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14 says that. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, when he started with but the natural man, so uh, let me quickly go back a bit and uh, show you why he said the but. Then you can get it better. The light of God is shining over you and in your world. And the truth of God is bringing you to a place you never thought you could attain. But this is what the Lord has prepared for you through these teachings. Here's the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Father, we thank you. First Corinthians chapter 2, I read to us the 14th verse. The whole thought flows from what we were discussing last week about the things that eyes have not seen. Let me take it from there so that you can catch this. Oh, 
You know, sometimes you just need to enjoy the scriptures. Let me take it from verse 6, okay? It says that, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So you, as a child of God, must know that there is the wisdom of this age. There is a, there's a wisdom of the rulers of this age. That is why we keep teaching you concerning what is called common sense. What do you call common sense? It's the wisdom of this age. It's the wisdom of the rulers of this age. If you as a child of God follows that kind of sense, you lose scriptural sense. The Christian is supposed to live by scriptural sense, not common sense. Common sense is unholy. If you are in the Old Testament, anything that is common, you are forbidden to touch it. Because God is holy. So Paul, the apostle, the, when we are among the mature, we speak wisdom. But there's a wisdom of this world that we are not involved in. Verse 7. Now we declare God's wisdom. This is the wisdom that the, people, the mature ones speak. Which is a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. So there are things that were mysteries. They were hidden. And yet they were there ordained for our glory. When? Before time began. Are you enjoying the scriptures? All right. Verse 10. None of the rulers of this age understood it. This mystery of God, this wisdom of God. People of this world don't understand it. For if they had, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't know what God was doing in Jesus Christ. However, verse 9, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no man, no human mind has conceived are the things God has prepared for those who love him. Who are those who love him? If you love me, keep my word. When the gospel of God's beloved son, Jesus Christ, is preached to a man and the man believes and receives the gospel, he loves God. Those who choose against God Prove that they don't love God. And so they take themselves out of these amazing dimensions of experiences, of things unheard of, things unseen, and things beyond human conception. Verse 10. So these things that no eyes have seen, no ears heard, no entered the hearts of human. Say verse 10. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. So who reveals these things to us? We don't go to school to get to know them. We don't read horoscopes to know them. Are you following? We get to know them by the Holy Ghost. So if you are born again and follow the Holy Ghost, it means that you have access to know things that men will not know. Oh man, when the church takes our place, inventions will no more be in the hands of unbelievers. If you read history, you will notice that in the beginning of the age of enlightenment, nations that never had a gospel, never had any patents, because they never invented it. It was the light of the gospel of Christ, the impartation of eternal life, that, are, that awakened spirits of men and their minds to bring discoveries. Many of the major discoveries that science is running on today were brought into being by people who had eternal life. But the devil took over and corrupted it. But the times are coming when the great discoverers and inventors of life will be people full of the Holy Ghost. Because he will take us into things yet not known. Oh, praise God. He says, God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Verse, so verse 10 continues. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who, know, who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world. So again, he makes a difference between the Spirit of the world and the Spirit that is from God. Just what we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. Are you following this? You see, there are things God made available to us in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1, 3, it says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us 
to virtue and glory. What are these things? You cannot know them by sitting down and then racking your brains. You know them because the Holy Ghost reveals them to us. So he said that one of the advantages of having the Holy Ghost in us is that the Holy Ghost aish, is given to us to make us know the things that have been freely given to us. For instance, righteousness is freely given to us. It is God's kind of righteousness. Holiness is our nature. Incorruption is brought to light. Deathlessness is our state. Wealth is our nature. It's about these things. You can't read the Bible with an academic and theological perspective to get it. It is only when the Holy Ghost has your heart that he pours these things into them. Then he said that there is a difference between the spirit that we are working with and the spirit of the world. A lot of God's sons and daughters don't know that the world is running by a spirit. So they play with worldliness. And they don't understand why the Bible says in, in James that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Why? Because things of the world are driven by a spirit. So it's not as simple as, oh, let's use common sense so that what the world is doing is what we are doing. No, what they are doing is driven by the spirit of the world. In Ephesians 2 verse 2, the Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. So the Bible says, how can you say you are a child of God and you are in close union in terms of thought and perspectives with people of the world? He says, that what union has darkness with light? What union has Christ with Belial? What union, what unity is that between righteousness and unrighteousness? How can we be born of God, holy sons of God, and running our lives by the dictates and the elements of people that are controlled by the spirit of the world, which is of the devil? You have to be quick to know. There is no neutral grounds in spirit. Everyone is functioning by a spirit. Is either the spirit of God, that's the Holy Ghost, or the spirit of the world, that's Satan. So he said that we, what we have is not the spirit of the world. Making a clear dichotomy between the spirit of the world and the Holy Ghost. Okay, let's go now. Then he said that the spirit was given to show us the thing that have been freely given to us. Verse 13. This is what we speak. What do we speak? The things that the Holy Ghost has shown us, that God has given us. This is what we speak. Not in words taught by human wisdom. Do you see human wisdom again here? So which words are we supposed to use? We don't use words of human wisdom, but we speak in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. Oh, glory to God. So you see, I come to your regular devotion and I speak a language and it sounds too high and all that. Why? I'm not speaking words with, uh, that are taught by the wisdom of men. I'm going to talk about incorruption, deathlessness. These are dimensions that look too, too high for men to conceive. But they shouldn't be high for the sons of God. Why? We have the Holy Ghost who has brought us in into this arena of spiritual realities. He says, we speak them explaining spiritual reality with spirit-taught words. Glory to God. Oh, son of God, how do you speak? Do you use the profane language and the corrupt language of the world? Or do you speak spirit-taught words? When there is confusion around, how do you speak? When there are challenges around, how do you speak? We speak spirit-taught words. Speak spirit-taught words to your children. Don't speak according to the way they are behaving. Speak, speak spirit-taught words into your marriage. Don't speak into your marriage the way you are seeing it. Speak spirit-taught words into your city, into your nation. We speak spirit-taught words. Speak spirit-taught words concerning your life. And these are words based on the things the Holy Ghost has revealed. Then we, can, we come to verse 14. He said that the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are designed only through the Spirit. You see what? So this is where we came to. This uh, uh, I read to you in the New King James, but this is NIV. So, I read to you from New King James again and then show you. He said that, But the carnal man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritual design. Now, if you followed all that I've read to you from verse 
6 all the way to 14 in the NIV. It shows you that a child of God has insight into spiritual things. And yet these spiritual things cannot be received by the natural man because they are foolishness. Why? They are not in that realm. It's like you travel to China or you go on the road and you meet a group of Chinese. And they are expressing familiarity with you in Chinese language and you have no clue what language they are are speaking. It it will be like, what kind of nonsense is going on here? That's what you are going to be thinking about. It is foolishness to you. Why? You don't understand. But in their realm, they are talking to you. They love you. So when we speak spirit-taught words, they appear foolish to the people of the world. But as a child of God, you have the advantage of the Holy Ghost to be able to understand those spirit-taught words. So when we speak the language of the scriptures, we expect the sons and daughters of God will understand. Why? The spirit with which we speak is the same spirit in them. So the second Holy Ghost advantage is that you have the ability to know things that are spiritually designed. Let me take my time. The next few minutes left to reach you over here in the man's spirit. We said here that life can be very simple and beautiful when you learn to design things as you grow in the spirit. Wrong decisions, bad choices in marriage, school, Work and life in general have made life bitter and hopeless for many, even including sons of God. Yet, this shouldn't be so. You see, a child of God wants to study and is playing games with which cause to study. Of course, when you have not yet been enlightened and you are young, parents help you. But you don't just choose courses of study in life because it appears this way. What is the discernment of the spirit? A child of God wants to marry. And the features is looking at carnal features. He's unable to design in spirit which right lady to go to. A child of God wants to move to another nation. No man hears that, oh, I can get visa here. He's just going. No spiritual discernment. Even the business to start. It's like, They just live life where to go, where to live. Everything is determined by natural circumstances. No. And many people have crashed. Many people have made mistakes that have put their lives in painful situations. Look at a lady who, instead of being spiritually designed, just walks along, looks like a young man, handsome, having a promising future because he's he's working, has a good job, and yet the guy is not born again, but appears to speak some loving language that makes her feel like flying in the air. And so she goes into that way. Gets married to this guy who every weekend wants to go to the pub and drink some bottles of beer. After a few days, the guy now begins to look at other women. Trouble strikes. The lady has given birth to one child. Now, before you realize, the whole thing is separated. Or sometimes two children. Now you've given birth to two children. And you are looking for a fresh young man to marry. <laughs> Nothing is impossible to him that believe it. So you can still. But sometimes these things, they put you in a state of a life that is irreversible. Sometimes, oh, a young man sees the person and feels, oh, this is a lady. Then as they begin to discard, the person says, oh, you know what, I have to them. Hey, the, the story changes. What has happened? Lack of discernment has changed the person's life. Sometimes somebody is supposed to go into a certain country. Oh, he starts, he's going for greener pastures. But pastures, then he steps, steps into the country. And things become so complex. People have to do things, lie a lot. Eh? Somebody is carrying his own sister and saying they are married. You are marrying your own sister so you can get a visa. What are you talking about? Then people go, so, oh, I want to get a document, so marry me. Oh, it, there's nothing. They end up just messing with each other. How can you live in the same apartment with somebody you don't know and say you are just pretending to get it? Why, why, why do you know all these kind of things? For? Did God send you to that nation? Oh, lack of discernment. And yet, if you are born again, you shouldn't have these issues. You see, and it comes across business, home, I mean, every area of life. If you walk in discernment, you can have life easy. What does it take? You don't need to be an apostle or a prophet. 
you are full of the Holy Ghost. Say with me, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Say, the Holy Ghost is my advantage. Say, I design everything in my life. Now, I'm not talking about every time you want to do something, you stand there sanctimoniously waiting to hear my son, my son, my daughter, and become so spooky about everything. If you want to go and buy food, they are waiting, waiting, waiting. Five hours are standing there. What are you doing? I'm waiting to design whether I should buy food from this woman or not. You just make life complex. It's a life. It's a region of living. If you know you're being in, Christ, you're in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost, it's, it's a life you live naturally. Oh, there's more in the Spirit, but time has got me about cannot read. But go and read it. There's so many beautiful things. We said here that being filled with the Holy Spirit and your oneness with Him as a child of God is the secret to spiritual discernment. There's no neutrality in life, in this life. Every step or action you take must be in the Spirit, must be in accordance with God's Word. Acknowledge and celebrate the truth that your being filled with the Holy Ghost is your advantage to discern things and begin to expect it. And you realize that you just know what to do, where to go. Things will just come to you and your life will be in perfection according to God's will. I think I've not finished reading what we have in the Spirit because I had to do so much with the scripture. But go back and read it and you, you get a lot. The Holy Ghost advantage part two. You can discern in the spirit. You can grow and be a guru in the spirit. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We have been lifted. Now we know that we can discern. We can have spiritual discernment because we are one with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You have been watching us. There's a big life of the spirit here. Instead of living as if you don't need spirit, and then you get to a place that you are now beginning to read horoscopes. You know, you get people who say, intelligent people say, oh, my birthday is this, so I'm a, I'm a goat. And they are learning a ghost life to be because their birthday is this day. I don't get it. There is a better way of knowing spiritual things than denying the proper spiritual things. And then because you are a spirit being and you need spirit, you now be, begin to turn things upside down. Get born again. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. And you be in the right spirit. The spirit that the Father who made you wants you to have. What does it take? Believe Jesus died and rose again. Believe that in him is eternal life that you can have and be born again. And declare him as Lord of your life by saying this for me. Say, Jesus, I believe you died and you were raised from the dead. I believe eternal life is in you. I believe you rose again and then you are Lord of my life. And I declare you so. I am born again even now. Hallelujah. That with all your heart, truly you are born again. Make sure you contact us and then we'll help you to grow. Keep following the good devotion and then you will mature in spirit. Don't forget to get planted in Bible teaching and practicing church. You got born again today and remain in the fellowship of the body of Christ. Let Jesus come because it's going to come very soon. I'm going to come away again in the next episode. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.